Well, hello and welcome back to the MCAT Club. This is our weekly call for Monday, March 24th, 2014. My name is Don Osborne and I am your host of the MCAT Club. In case you haven't heard before, MCAT Club is the number one place to go for up-to-date information about preparing for the MCAT, studying, uh, timeline, and I even answer your MCAT related questions live here on the call. You can find the MCAT Club here at Inquarter.com as well as on YouTube and on Facebook. I also will occasionally send out a tweet or two, uh, and I do a lot of work on Google+. Uh, who knows? You might even find me on Reddit once in a while. As a medical school admissions consultant, I work with you, amazing students, who really, really, really want to get into medical school, but you might feel uncertain or you might be stuck about parts of your application process, and you really want to package yourself and strengthen your candidacy for medical school. I promise. I'm the most uplifting and encouraging advisor you'll ever meet because it's my job to take the application and the experiences that you give me and help you find ways to strengthen them so that you can become the best candidate possible. Today is March 24th, 2014, and I was looking at the calendar and I realized that next week is April already, and it's uh, pretty close to peak season for uh, the application process, Many of you are neck deep in studying for the MCAT or about to be neck deep in studying for the MCAT. Uh, the semester is almost over. You're getting ready for your final exams and there's a lot of stuff going on. So what I thought I would do is I would lay out a timeline for your MCAT prep. So if you're taking the test between late April and mid June of this year, where should you be at and what should your study prep look like between now and test day? Okay, so let's begin with the first part. You want to have all of your review, especially in the sciences, completed by now. So it's time to switch over 100% or nearly so to working practice problems and more specifically on practice tests. And you'll want to do a lot of them. Time after time after time, you'll hear students who have performed well on the MCAT say that the number one thing that really helped them was that they took a lot, a lot, a lot of practice tests. So I'd like to see you do that as well. So that means that I want you to take between 15 and 20 practice tests between now, the uh, end of March, beginning of April, and your test date, let's say mid-May. So if that's about 10 weeks away, then that's about one to two practice tests tests a week for good measure. I want you to be doing a lot of review of the test questions and the answer choices. This is not you like taking two MCATs, you know, one on Monday, one on Wednesday, and you take the rest of the week and ignore it. No, 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 no. You take a practice test on Monday, you take the rest of the day off, and then on Tuesday you come back and you really start studying and pouring over and researching what happened in the test. And what I mean by this is that you're going to be reviewing the test questions, you're going to review the answer choices, and especially you're going to be looking for the pattern in the answers, especially answers that you thought were right, but were actually incorrect. So I want you to look for the actual pattern or structure of the answers, the way they're worded and the, 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 the way it's styled logically. Okay, so that's the overall structure of how you go about doing this. You take a practice test, uh, and then you're going to take a rest for the rest of the day. The next day, you're going to review that test pretty thoroughly, as much time as you have permitting, and then maybe take a rest day, and then you're going to repeat that process over again. Take another test, take a rest. Next day, review the test, maybe take a rest, review some more if you need to, go back over any uh, of the content, if you skipped a, missed a problem because there is a, some material that you forgot, you want to review that a little bit, and then so on. If you do it this way, you're going to have plenty of opportunity to take a lot, a lot of practice tests, and you're going to be doing this over and over and over again, and that is absolutely going to give you the best leg up <clears throat> on anything you can be doing right now. Okay, so what happens if you don't have 20 practice tests? Right. Well, here's the point. I have no problem with you taking the same practice test over again. doesn't bother me at all. So you think, you know, uh, 
I don't really want to do the same practice test over again because you might remember test questions or answer choices. And I'm like, eh, okay, if you take the same test two days in a row, that's probably true. But there's no way you're going to remember uh, much about a test that you took five or six weeks ago. So if you have 10 practice tests, you could do all of them twice. And what, maybe you're going to get one or two questions right because you happen to remember the question per test, maybe three or four. It's really going to be very trivial. Much more important for you to have the experience to get really good at the timing of the test, to get really good at recognizing answer choices and specifically at recognizing the answer choice patterns, especially the ones that you fall trap uh, or trap you over and over again. Okay, so that's all uh, on the MCAT Club for today. Remember, if you have any questions regarding the MCAT Club, I am here to help you every Monday afternoon. We'd be happy to talk to you live on the call, or you can always email me and send your questions in that way. I look forward to talking to you guys uh, next week. Be sure to tune in next week for special guests, some surprises, and of course, answers to your questions. Talk to you then. Bye for now.